Is it true that your mom is 5'3 and your dad is 5'4? Something yes, like that? Yes, this is true. But by the way, I'm first time here and I'm nervous and I'm scared <laughs> because because my headphones don't fit on my ears and my head. You know, like I was like, I, I, I hope so. I know. I, if I broke it, I'll buy a new one, I promise. This is Boban Marjanovic. As a lumbering, gigantic force of a human being, he carved out his spot in the league due to his big composition. There aren't many 7 foot 3, 290 pound human beings on the planet, and there have been even less in the NBA, and even less than that in a big budget film. Let alone at the same time, there's only been one human on Earth who's done both. Well, actually, technically two if you count that. I, well, there's that time where I was like, well, shoot, man, there's actually three. All right, my fault. But but there's only one that was paid by the directors of John Wick to be killed by Keanu Reeves. So we've all seen the many goofy antics of Boban Marjanovic, and right there at the top is him facing off against John Wick as the assassin Ernest, which led to one minute and 58 seconds of pure, unadulterated fighting. <laughs> Now, you've either got two reactions to this. One, you're incredibly surprised that something like this happened. Maybe you're not familiar with the John Wick franchise or you just didn't know that Boban was in the film. Or two, you've seen this scene multiple times and come back to it every once in a while to witness Boban and Keanu Reeves fighting to the death. Either way, you're still probably wondering though, how did this even come to be? I'm Kip Kame 11 and in order to find that out, we're going to have to go back. It's the year 1972 and the game of death is being filmed in the second to last production period of Bruce Lee's career and life. For those of you who've stumbled across the scene that I'm going to be talking about in your YouTube journeys, you know that this is the film that featured Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, at the time the Milwaukee Bucks center and at the time basketball's greatest player. This crossover wasn't one that was formulated overnight. It developed slowly but surely, beginning years before when Kareem was still a college player at UCLA. After finding out about Lee's martial arts through a magazine, he reached out to him and became his pupil, where he learned the art of Jeet Kune Do, Bruce Lee's personal fighting style. Kareem turned out to be a fine pupil, one of the finest that Bruce Lee had ever had actually. He even said that Kareem could have perfected his style if he was just a little bit quicker. Which, you know, is a little bit hard to do when you're 7 foot 2, as you could imagine. Fast forward some and Bruce wants Kareem in his film The Game of Death, his personal project. And so they shoot for roughly 10 days in the summer of 1972. From there, a lot of things happen which tragically lead into Bruce Lee's end. The film goes through remodeling until 1978, where it's finally released worldwide. It does quite well in the United States and is influential enough to be defined as one of Bruce Lee's most notable films. And within that, of course, includes the fight with Kareem. It became an iconic scene, the best of two worlds, exchanging blows in a bizarre scenario that was incredibly unexpected, but nothing short of amazing. So what does this have to do with Boban Marjanovic and Keanu Reeves? Enter Chad Stileski. As an up-and-coming director from a knowledge of stunt doubling for multiple action movies, he worked his way up from co-director in the first two movies of the John Wick franchise and was able to get his first job as full-time director for John Wick 3. If you're unfamiliar with the John Wick movies or action movies like that in general, just know that it's basically a bunch of fighting scenes with plot loosely strung in there to advance the stakes of the fighting. It's a lot like a real-life Dragon Ball Z movie, but with a lot more blood and a lot less Super Saiyan. Just think about it like that. But they got hands, for real. Ooh, it's, not, it's still impressive. Chad Stileski wanted the first scene of the movie to include some sort of giants for the main character John Wick, played by Keanu Reeves, for the first scene of the movie. As a close friend and training partner of Bruce Lee's son, Brandon Lee, before his own tragic death, he'd been inspired by the Bruce Lee Kareem battle and wanted something similar for John Wick. The only problem was he didn't have a seven foot superstar on speed dial or a martial arts program that took in NBA basketball centers. So he didn't know where to look. But it just so happened that a producer, Basil and Janwick, was a Clippers fan, which of course meant that he was a Boban Manjanovic fan. You can put the pieces together. Boban was contacted a few days later and he responded well to it. I get that text message, I was like, wow, are you serious? This is one of my favorite movies. Like, you know, like, yeah, 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 yeah. Bill, Bill, yes, 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 yes. We tam tam bap, tam bap, tam bap. Muscle, muscle, muscle. <laughs> it was happening. Until it wasn't. While Boban had already been casted as the perfect fit for the opening role of Ernest, there was an issue. 
For some reason, Boban's basketball schedule wasn't initially able to line up with the week or so that was needed in the summer of 2018. Boban's agents tried to find other clients in the NBA that would fit the role, but Basile persisted on Boban. Eventually, I'm guessing after Boban decided to lose, like, you know, his, his attribute boost for the next three weeks, uh, they were able to make a deal that made him an official superstar. Now, this wasn't the first go around for Boban. He'd already been in another movie back in Serbia as a cameo for a basketball film that, that relived the 1970 Yugoslavian Olympic team. While his three minutes on screen were pretty golden, this was clearly different. <laughs> before he was running up and down the basketball court in his natural element. But in order to prepare for a fight scene with John Wick, he needed training. For the week or so in New York, Boban practiced several hours a day to get the choreography down with stunt double Jackson Spidell. See, in the movies, the actors don't do the actual fighting, but in Boban's case, he was gonna have to, given that he was seven foot three and 290 pounds. You're not gonna find that out nowhere. Both his acting and his fighting came out great though, as you can see. You were not made to live as brutes, but to follow virtue and knowledge. Dante. You sure this is what you wanna do? 14 million, it's a lot of money. Not if you can't spend it. Hey, you know, the thing is, he actually started learning English seriously like three or so years ago. So that, that was that was very good. Alas, in the end, he wasn't good enough to win out against the main character. Of course, it's, it's plot. But even so, with that appearance, Boban Marjanovic continued his quest to be one of the NBA's most notable players. His personality, anthropological composition, and his accent in English all come together to make a man built for the big stage. Don't be surprised if his post career outshines his actual playing career. He's already the most liked player in the NBA and arguably in all of the four major sports leagues in America. There's already been other companies that are using his personality for their own shows centered around him, like the Players Tribune where they had Boban on the Goban. Boban. Honda. Goban. Boban. On the Goban. And even the LA Clippers themselves, when they branded Tobias Harris and Boban Marjanovic as Bobby and Toby, best friends forever. His high charisma, sunny personality, and just straightforward agreeableness has all the components to make an audience smile. He showed that he could do that in less than a minute in his post game interview with Shaq, with all but a few words and, of course, a heart. I love you, Boban. <laughs> I love you, Boban. Thank you, brother. Yeah. <laughs> that time Boban Marjanovic was killed by Keanu Reeves was the first time that he was shown on the American big screen, but don't expect it to be his last. We love you, Boban. <laughs> well, listen, I'm embarrassing myself right now, so if you haven't hit that sub button, please do so. This is actually sort of hurts. This hurts, bro. How do you do? I mean, he got a long arm.